Good morning. It is uh, it's probably going to be good afternoon by the time I get this uploaded. But it's morning for me right now. Good morning. It's the 18th of May, 2022. Yeah. 18 de Mayo. Chuta. Carajo. And folks, yes, you see this right. I ha oh, no. Another game book. <laughs> War game book. Yes, it doesn't seem like I've mined this content out. Looks like I can go even further into the uh, War game books. And um, I'm going to give you a review. I've played this a couple times. I've played it enough to give you a nice little review. And uh, yeah, we're going to talk about it. We're going to look at it and talk about it. This is obviously says from the creator of iVirus. I haven't played iVirus. I'm going to. Um, Adam C. Mitchell, General Quarters, a D66 game book adventure. Now, if you're not, if you're, I, don't, I can't, I couldn't imagine someone not watching this video not being familiar with what D66 means. It's just a, uh, uh, you've probably played it, you probably might, may not have heard that term. You roll two D6s, you usually have, I always have one, different colors, and you designate the light color, the ones, and the, darker color the the tens um, or vice versa and there you go you got you roll it say you roll a one and a six that would be a 16 or a five and a four that would be a 54 and that's what this is based on it's kind of a way to to take dice and um take a couple of d6s and turn them into a uh Many more choices, right? Give me more choices. And so let's look at the blurb. Adam, uh, Adam, see Mitchell. Adam is a self published author based out of Shropshire, UK, with his family. He has produced both interactive fiction and novels. Welcome to General Quarters, Captain. You are about to take control of a submarine in World War II. Your mission to sink merchant trade convoys, ships, and tankers. With each ship lost, the much needed resources of the Japanese war machine will slow to a crawl. This is your mission. Good luck, Captain. The D66 gamebook is not like conventional interactive fiction, for it has no fixed or predetermined path or way to play out this adventure. Literally, the dice determine the course of your mission. Okay, yeah. That's what it sounds like to me, and it's. I, I, this one was released in March, March twenty second, I think, of uh, or it came up on the Kindle or Amazon, whatever you want to call it, on March twenty second, two thousand and twenty two, I think, something like that. Another war game book. Uh, I'm gonna check out some more of uh, Adam C. Mitchell's books and some more of his recommendations. By the way, this, but. I've wa I've played all those those six Mike Lambeau games, which I was impressed by. I've played those some of those Worthington games. I've played those uh, the um, oh the one the fellow that does the B seventeen game. I played a lot of these game books, and they're all I found all of them fun, especially those Mike Lambeau ones. They for the price and just what you get. But those those games are more uh, along the lines of a traditional war game, hex encounter war game. This on the other hand is almost a hybrid between a choose-your-own-adventure type book, a choose-your-own-path, and, uh, and a war game. Um, I think... Well, let me break these down. I do have some sheets, yeah. Because you're going to need a sheet, not a character sheet per se, but you're going to roll up your... You're going to roll up your, uh, your, your crew. You have a whole score. Command score, and it's something like you roll 2d6 and some. How do you roll that up? Roll a d6 and add three or something like that. Uh, roll one die and add three to the number roll. This is your total command score. Yeah, the whole roll two dice and add six to, to this number roll. It gives you some stuff like that to tell you. So, your whole score, once that gets to zero, you're done. Your command scores, how much good of a commander you are, your crew competency points, that plays into the uh, uh, 
to, to the whole thing too. I think the command score was is it the command score or the crew cop? It's command score. I think that um, deals into you uh, combat periscope score, su submerged score, emerge score, and your Morse score. Those are like missions, right? You have certain missions that go on, and these are torpedoes. You come out with eighteen torpedoes, tubed and ready to go, I guess, and um, or not in the tubes, but getting ready to be when needed. And it, it, you take them off when you spend them because if you take if you spend them all, you're done too. You have no way to defend yourself. It's over, right? So what you are, you're uh, an Australian submarine captain in the uh, around Waddle Canal, right? And so um, that's what you kind of do. And what's really cool about this game. Um, torpedo, talking about that. Non D sixty six. Okay, what time? Combat. The combat's kind of interesting. You roll two D six for the enemy you're facing. Add the com their command score. This is their total command strength. Then you roll two D six for yourself and add the number rolled to your command score. This is your CMD strength. If your command strength is higher than the enemy's command strength, then their attempt to sink you has taken a setback, and instead. You have damaged them, right? So you're just trying. You subtract three from their score, then you subtract whatever damage score they have, what they you may be facing, right? So you're gonna need this. You're also gonna need another scratch piece of paper to write down what you're facing. Um. So, and the and so if you roll and say you're gonna roll a twenty-one wings of death. Wow, that's a good one. The Yangtze Kaing is cruising slowly, recharging the large array of lead, what is that? Lead acid batteries needed for underwater propulsion. Being above the sea line is dangerous for the Kaing's weaker hull. Cloud cover prevents you, your lookouts, from spotting an enemy, any enemy contacts. You are setting ducks in the middle of the Sea of Japan, just off the central shipping lanes between Nankan and M M Misato. Uh, it's then you hear you hear it, the the telltale of a pair of Ki eighty four Japanese fighter plane engines. Man, man the deck gun! You shout, and minutes later the deck gun is primed and poised. You have no clue. If the if the Ki eighty four has spotted you, it's alone. If it's alone or in a squadron, either way, be it alone or with friends. If your craft gets hit by the thirty millimeter, millimeter thirty millimeter cannons, your weak hull will get turned into a leaking bucket of smoke and chaos. And then it's going to tell you. Then something's going to happen. You're going to have. You're going to come down here. Spend twenty five. Uh, crew points and prepare for an emergency dive beneath the yeah. So that's the kind of thing you're doing. So you're either rolling for checks a lot of times or combat, straight up combat. And and there's some more. Of it. But that's the way the game goes. And you either win by not taking out twelve <coughs> transports or. Uh, Supply ships, right? I think it's 12. Or you're going to get sunk. I've got sunk both times. I've played it. So that's how it is. So quick review, and we'll wrap this up. The good. The good is that it is um, easy to get into. You just really read. You can really get into playing this within five minutes of picking it up and starting to read and go on, right? That a lot of it seems intuitive, just sort of intuitive. Um, very good, very well done that way to where the rules are, the, 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 the regular rules are, you know, just kind of flow into learning to play the game as you're, as you're reading them. Great, great way that's done. Uh, the other good parts is it's, 
I like the system. I like the kind of the idea of the D66 game book adventure where you're rolling and you're reading an adventure. It reminds you of a more of a choose your own path book. I loved those. And uh, those are really what I've always been um, wanting within, you know, war game books. And they, they have been done. Um, it was Combat Command, that series of books, which is done very well. And then, of course, all the game books that are more like a traditional war game. I love those, too. Don't get me wrong. Um, but the system and the reading and the narrative part portion, I just I just love. Love it. Um, another great thing is the price. This is under $10. Under $10. I can't beat that. I go on Amazon, but it's that good. It's got good to play. Um it also, there is some replayability. Since it's the D66 system, you ain't just going to read it once and set it down. You have some replayability, so that's really good. The bad. The bad kind of goes along with being the good, what you would like about it. Um, I do, it doesn't have indefinite replayability. Some people are going to play it once and say, hey, that's kind of neat, I'll, I'll, I'll bow out. Me, I'll keep on playing it just because it's fun. I do think that it could become difficult to sink 12 ships. And then you're just going to be going over some of the same paragraphs you've already gone over before. And you're going to say, hey, this is kind of, I have already know this. Let's just put this down for a while. So that, that, that could be a drawback. Um, another bad point is what's... <laughs> I, I put this with a good point, but it's also a bad point. If you're a traditional hex encounter gamer, then this may not satisfy your itch. It'll satisfy your itch for throwing some dice and to get and making a few decisions, but it may not do what those Mike Lambeau books. If you look, those you just look at them like puzzle books, and you kind of solve it, right? You can see the map. You can see what's going on. This is much more, and I hate to use the term, but I'm going to uh, theater of the mind, right? Where you're, you're more, and, and that's the thing. I do believe, just by looking at it, I do believe Adam Mitchell probably comes from more of an RPG background in the, into the wargaming, right? You can be a traditional wargamer, I am, and play RPGs like a war game because I kind of do you know I kind of whether I'm running it or what I kind of I'm a bit of a munchkin when I'm a player I'm a bit you know a murder hobo I kind of run a murder hobo games right that's the that's just how I play because combat's a big part of it and I'm more of a war gamer and I also notice people that are more RPGers when they get into war game they they want to make it more of a narrative and make it more of a sometimes a world exercise, more of an RPG type of uh, elements to it. And that's what I think he's done. And so if you're not, if you're a hardcore war gamer, this may not be for you. Um, it is for me. It is for me just because it's so good. And um, so prognosis, <laughs> uh, It has a long life to me. This the game like this, I'm going to keep. Uh, it, very small footprint. I'm going to keep and put on my shelf. Just like I did those Combat c Command games. I still got those after all these years. Because um, easy to keep, easy to carry. You can always go back to it, even if you've played it two dozen times. You know, you might get 10 plays out of it before you even say, okay, I'm, I'm going to give it a rest for a little bit. I've got two plays in. I'm still ready to go. So, um, yeah, it's a good book. It's a good game. I highly recommend it. Just know going in what you're getting. It's a hybrid of a uh, um, war game and a... Um, Choose your own adventure. And the combat's going to be a little simplistic, a little bit more like an RPG uh, or a yeah, RPG type of a, a combat system. Um, it's a little bit like, um, yeah, what is that? Uh, alone against, or not alone against dark, uh, four against darkness, right? It's a little bit like that, honestly. But it is totally worth 
picking up and under ten dollars you can we can all pick it up probably and, and and get our money's worth from it i've already got my money's worth from it so thank you all for watching thanks to adam c mitchell good stuff going on um i would like to see him do some more i didn't i haven't played the uh the virus game which uh what is it i virus maybe something i don't remember I haven't played that game, but I'm going to probably get it just to kick it around and see what it's like. There's even a supplement to that. I'd like to see some more of the, the, the war games here. All right, folks. Yeah, still with the war game books. Like I said, I'm, you have no idea how pleased I am with these books, y'all. Uh, I've always been pleased with a war game books, so and I just would like to see more. And whether it's the pandemic, whether it's whatever it is, the uh, uh, shipping, whatever, it we're starting to see more now, and I dig it a whole lot. All right, I've talked long enough and rattled on long enough. Y'all be good today. Get out there, play more war games. Find time to war game. Man, life is so short. Um, I, this this is sounds crazy me saying that, but you know I've just play more, have more, have more fun. Find time to have more fun, no matter what your hobby is. Get out there and do it. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.